my name's Fiona Haven, and I'm the Senior Marketing Manager at AI Media. Uh, our featured speakers for today's webinar are John Peck, Alec Downs, Gordon Chua, and Josh Smith, all from AI Media. Uh, John is the VP of the APAC region. Alec is Senior Business Development Manager, APAC. Uh, Gordon is Business Development Manager, APAC, and Josh is our Live Enterprise Functional Team Lead. Uh, in this webinar, you're going to hear about how live events and captionings intersect. Uh, the speakers will walk you through live event trends and the solutions that AI Media can offer to help you deliver better events, meetings, and more to global audiences. Uh, now, I'd like to welcome John, Alec, Gordon, and Josh for the Live Event Captioning Trends and Solutions webinar. Uh, let's get started. Uh, John, over to you. Great. Thank you, Fiona. And first off, I just want to say thank you for everyone uh, for attending us live and for those who are going to be watching uh, the video on demand. Really appreciate everyone's interest uh, in accessibility and what we do. Um, so as Fiona said, my name's John. I'm the VP of um, the APAC region. Uh, I joined AI Media eight and a half years ago uh, as a live voice captioner, uh, and I've spent a, a number of years working, um, coordinating a lot of, uh, of live events for our customers. Uh, so a quick, quick bit of background for about AI Media for those who aren't aware. So AI Media was founded in 2003 um, and we had the mission of making content access accessible for, for all. Um, one of our co-founders, Alex Jones, uh, is deaf. And so we focused on making them content accessible through uh, captioning both in real time and recorded captioning. Um, we've prim primarily delivered solutions to broadcasters such as Channel 9 and Channel 7, uh, universities and, and, and schools, uh, large corporates and government departments, um, and of course, the event space. What sets us apart was our dedication to live captioning. Um, we take a white glove approach with customers. Um, we really see ourselves as partnering with customers to um, going on that journey with them on how to make, um, uh, deliver accessible solutions in their unique environment. Um, we have a focus on um, premium quality captioning and we have a huge team of highly trained captioners who are dedicated to their craft. Um, and uh, we, we also view that, you know, um, our role is to advocate for accessibility too, and that it's not shouldn't just be an afterthought in that accessibility has wide reaching applications um, and benefits to in a universal design principle. So since 2017, um, we've grown into a global organization. So yes, we were founded in Australia, but now we have, um, you know, uh, we've split into three regions, the EMEA, US, uh, North America region, and of course the APAC region. Um, and then since 2017, we've made a number of acquisitions and the most transformational of those was an acquisition of a US-based company called EEG, which give, gave us access to a lot of technology and allows us to um, increase the range and application of how we provide accessibility. And we're going to talk through some of those solutions today. But um, as a result of those acquisitions, we're now really a truly one-stop shop. So whether from actually manufacturing the hardware and the solutions to coding the software, um, and then actually managing the delivery of the service, um, we, we do the total package. Uh, so one, one of our focuses has always been that, you know, there's some barriers to accessibility that have traditionally existed. And some of them are technical of how do I actually make this event um, accessible. And some of those are financial too, is I, do I have the budget for this? And so AI Media has been really focused on trying to overcome those barriers so that they don't, uh, they, they don't block accessibility for, for events. So some of the trends we've seen in the live event space, um, obviously there's been a huge overhaul in the last few years. Um, so, you know, prior to 2019, um, you know, the majority of the events that we worked on were in-person events. Um, and if there was a, like an online or virtual component, it was definitely seen as an afterthought. Uh, you know, think quality of video, it just didn't matter as much. And, and, it was, and there wasn't a huge range of uh, online app, uh, platforms that we really saw. Um, so most of our focus was uh, very in-person, how do we make the, the, the you know these events accessible? Um, of course, COVID arrives and then everything changes and uh, the whole world's forced online. And, and what we saw is um, events had to quickly find out how to, how to transition to a totally virtual online delivery format. And we just saw a proliferation of ways of delivering video platforms, um, video players. And so we had to become um, uh, experts really as all of our customers were coming to us asking us how does accessibility fit um, in, in the platform that I happen to be using. So um, that, was, that was a really big change. 
And then um, as we've kind of come out of all the lockdowns, um, what we've seen is naturally that events have kind of moved into a traditional kind of hybrid model now where, um, you know, there is, yes, everyone's clamoring to get back in person and have that uh, in-person experience that they um, that they want to have at an event. But there's also um, a ex expectation that um, there's a remote accessibility to the event. Um, and those people who are joining remotely expect the same kind of level of experience as the people who are attending in person is what we've seen. So, you know, they want that interactivity, they want that premium look and feel. Um, and from an accessibility point of view, you want to, you don't want to restrict your audience to um, the accessibility options only going to be online or it's only going to be in person. There's an expectation that both are, are there. Um, and what we've also seen too then is that events have kind of taken on a, a, a broadcasty type approach or, or traditional broadcast approach. You know, there's a lot of AV setups and required at these events and, and the streaming infrastructure in place to distribute the video remotely. We've seen that only um, increase in kind of the, the technical uh, complexity of it. Um, and so that's where we see we fit in really well as is, um, you know, applying some of our traditional broadcast solutions that we've had. Um, into the the live events environment to make uh, adding uh, captions and subtitles really uh, easy um, in those scenarios. Um, and another, another trend that we've seen um, is just a general increase in accessibility. And this was already kind of happening before COVID, but, you know, there's a bigger and bigger push for, um, you know, uh, accessibility accessibility um, and you know a lot of you know large corporations have diversity inclusion teams uh, a lot of government departments have mandates for accessibility uh, so um, and not only is it just the social um, and ethical aspect of it I think people are seeing that um, you know making their event more accessible actually achieves the whole point of the event whether that be you know increased ticket sales whether it be raising money um, just making that event uh, more accessible uh, actually helps achieve uh, those metrics and we've seen um, that kind of change in um, attitude with all the people who are organizing events um, some of the events that we've kind of worked on, um, you know, and, and 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 how our solutions apply, uh, you know, it might be a product launch um, with, you know, in a, a new products being launched into multiple languages. And so, uh, you know, we've worked in situations where we're live translating and subtitling into multiple languages to just increase the number of people um, accessing um, that content. Uh, we've, you know, we've cat live captioned uh, AGMs and investor relations, and so that uh, quick turnaround transcripts are, are available for, for media releases and, and similar. Um, you know, we've worked on uh, in, in town halls for large global corporations who have teams uh, spread across the world who, yes, maybe English is the lingua franca, but, um, you know, English isn't the first language across all those um, places and being able to kind of translate that um, uh, and uh, allows greater accessibility for all the teams who are dispersed globally. Um, and and we've also seen, you know, in, in the education space, uh, you know, town, uh, prize uh, award ceremonies um, and having, um, you know, parents, and especially during lockdown, um, parents um, located around the world still being able to watch a webcast of, of, their, of their child win an award on stage and have access to that on the webcast in their native language. Um, so there's some of the scenarios that we've seen and, and how the, the events um, industry has, has changed over the last few years. Now, moving on to our solutions, as I mentioned, uh, the, e the acquisition of EEG has been transformational for us who have a lot of um, uh, infrastructure, I'm going to call it solutions in particular for how do you add captions or subtitles in a live kind of environment uh, reliably and, and, and solve some of the technical barriers that have traditionally existed. And, and this picture here is just a kind of general overview of how the, the solution works. And I'm going to run through some specifics, um, but basically um, the, the, this solution is we have a number of encoders and essentially all encoder is doing is getting the audio uh, which is what we need to create captions and subtitles from your event or video or whatever point. And then it's distributing that audio to um, either any of our human captions around the world um, or our automatic service called Lexi and then delivering those captions back to that encoder and the encoder is putting them into your video so that you can then distribute it to wherever your audience is required. That's the broad level overview of how the, the solution works. Um, if I go on to the next slide, um, so the, the most common um, uh, encoder that we've seen um, used is called um, the Encode Pro. 
and it's it's an SDI encoder and the, the and simply how it works is it takes in SDI video I um, mean it's a, it's a hardware unit it takes an SDI video and then you get an SDI output of um, either closed captions or open captions and the difference between closed captions and open captions for those who don't know is closed captions is captions that kind of be, can be turned on and off but or um, an open captions are burned into the video and are hard coded in there um, and this is most common and a use case of where you'd see this is is it, you say you've got an event in a function center um, and so um, you're, the, the, you know you're filming the event and you have an online audience who's watching the live stream of that event uh, you'd be the video the encoder would be on site at the venue uh, the video is going in the audio there is then being routed to um, the captioner or our Lexi service captions are being delivered back to that unit in the venue and then out of that unit you can get an open caption output so that that can be shown on the on the t um, monitors and, and displays in the venue so you have the open captions there for everyone to view on the video and a closed caption output can then be sent to a live stream encoder which creates the webcast and so those people who are watching uh, the the webcast can see the closed captions that they can turn on and off um, that's a typical use case of what we'd see there um, there um, the the what what this one of the things that this solves is um, a lot of events is a lot of um, the key question is how do you get audio from your event to uh, a remote captioner and people are, uh, often go do I have to go on site um, which is a very you know the traditional way sometimes that was does sending a stenographer on site which is expensive and um, you know it's not very flexible if any anything happens you're not going to have a, a steno there whereas being a, having a remote delivery allows uh, a lot of redundancy flexibility if anything goes wrong but of course um, um, you know, it's like, how do we get the audio out reliably? It might be setting up some sort of web conferencing system if you weren't using this and then doing testing, making sure the microphones are connected correctly. Um, and then how do you deliver captions back reliably? Is it putting a burden on the AV team there to work out how to overlay? So um, the, 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 the um, beauty of this solution is it kind of takes away all that networking. Um, it, it reliably gets um, captions to um, the captioner or Lexi service um, and gets the captions back. And so it solves like one of those um, problems that we've seen. The other, another encoder that we have, and it works in a very similar fashion to the Encode Pro is the Encode Viewer. It's an SDI encoder as well. But the key difference there is it has a lot more customization options for the event. Um, so this is really good for in-person events. Uh, one of the um, key features that it has is the output, the SDI output, it can uh, rescale the video by 15%. And what that does is it actually creates a space either underneath the video or above the video um, where your captions can sit so that captions aren't taking up valuable real estate on the video. Um, and there's a lot of other customization features too, such as changing font, changing the color, changing the position of the captions. You just have a lot more display options. And we've seen this really um, uh, be uh, uh, demanded by events that really care about presentation. Um, you know, they really care about where the caption is sit, how they look, the style feel doesn't match up with my branding. Um, and we've also seen uh, this product as well be um, work really well where there's a lot of presentations and, and slide presentations. So you don't have a lot of real estate um, on the video to actually have captions covering anything up because it might cover up something important on the presentation. Um, or we've also seen it in places like uh, sports stadiums where um, the video again is really important. And so you want um, captions sitting underneath too so that you can deliver that accessibility without um, obscuring any imagery on the video. I'll now throw over to uh, Josh, who is gonna take you through another one of our products called Falcon. Thank you very much, JP. Um, as JP has very kindly shown off some of our hardware encoder options to adding captions, what we also have um, as an alternative is a software captioning encoder called Falcon. Um, so Falcon is a fully cloud hosted software captioning encoder, which takes the place of those hardware solutions um, if that better suits your needs. Um, Falcon requires no additional on-site equipment and it operates on a subscription service. Uh, so what Falcon can do is add live captioning into any streaming encoder uh, that you're using and also any video platform combination that communicates via RTMP or RTMPS. Um, it works with all major streaming platforms that can display those embedded closed captions, um, but if you're using a platform that doesn't, uh, it can burn them in as open captions. Um, we found this has been very ideal for AV teams and uh, event producers that ideally are first working via using the RTMP protocol for streaming um, 
so that would be streaming online, um, but also uh, in hybrid events, um, as you can also send the same caption track via Falcon uh, in venue as well to be displayed um, by the audience members, uh, either on a, on a monitor or um, on their own personal devices. Um, we've also seen um, this uh, Falcon option be very scalable. Um, so if you are running concurrent events, um, if you're, uh, for example, running an event, you've got four rooms uh, with all different content going on simultaneously. Falcon is extremely scalable um, at a, a budget price to be able to uh, caption and stream um, all those four content um, content rooms um, simultaneously and also be able to go to as many endpoints um, as required. Um, and we've also seen um, AV teams and producers uh, using Falcon uh, ideally uh, as they're traveling to different multiple locations or they have a lot of short time to be able to set up their event. So adding that extra hardware um, has been a bit of a barrier to them. Falcon is that solution that's been able to allow them to quickly uh, move locations and set up their productions uh, to enable um, keeping that accessibility available on their events. Um, and what we can see on this little diagram here that we can see on the presentation is uh, that similar to what we've seen before that JP has spoken about is we see Falcon is receiving uh, the stream from your streaming encoder, it incorporates that, sends the audio um, to any your chosen captioning service, um, and then sends on to uh, the end player um, to as many as you like. And what we can do, we can jump over to this next slide and what we can see on this one here is kind of just a snapshot of what you'd be seeing uh, operating Falcon. So it's uh, fully uh, cloud hosted. So it's all gonna be online. You don't need to uh, worry about any hardware on this one. And this would be your monitoring page. Um, this is something that we've seen uh, uh, be very important to a lot of um, AV teams to be able to feel fully in control of their workflow. This gives you the full monitoring. You can see the input stream coming in from your streaming encoder and you can see the output with the captions and also it gives you all the real-time information um, that you need. Um, so in case if, if any troubleshooting is needed, all that information is there for you. Um, and what we can do is, well, we can see those captioning, you can see the captions appearing on that output. Um, and I can hear all of you asking like, we've spoken a lot about captioning, what are the captioning options? And I think now's a great time that I'll hand over to Alec, um, who's gonna talk to us about our captioning options. Uh, thank you, Josh. <clears throat> yes, as, as Josh says, we've uh, been talking about the ways in which you can uh, get the captions into your feed uh, through our encoders. And yeah, I'll take you just through uh, the services we have available to actually produce the captions. Um, so the first uh, service I'll talk about is Lexi, which is our ASR or Automatic Speech Recognition Solution. Again, it's available on our website for quick and easy sign up and deployment. Uh, it's a, a low-touch, budget-friendly, cloud-hosted ASR solution, which can be uh, either self-service or provided through a managed service model. Uh, and I'll just quickly take you through some of the features. Um, consistency of, of output is one. Um, if you are doing an event that's streaming to multiple destinations uh, simultaneously, uh, let's say you're doing something, uh, an event that goes to YouTube, but also to Facebook Live, um, <clears throat> if you're relying on the, uh, the automatic captions on those platforms, the output uh, would be different uh, on each platform as they have different engines. Uh, but with Lexi, uh, you have a consistent output uh, regardless of the endpoint. So uh, you benefit from that uniform experience uh, across the platforms. Um, so Lexi uses machine learning uh, to achieve a higher accuracy than many of the consumer grades or out of the box ASR solutions that you might find on various platforms. Um, so the more you use it, the better it gets. Uh, unlike Falcon and being cloud-based, it's highly scalable too. Uh, you know, it's very easy to run multiple instances of Lexi under one account. So whether you're capturing, uh, you know, uh, several breakout rooms at once, or if you're an event provider doing three events for different companies on different days on the same day, um, you can quite easily spin up and down uh, the number of Lexi's you require for simultaneous events. Um, 
mentioning accuracy again, um, one feature is what we call topic models or custom dictionaries. Um, this is uh, a feature that allows you to program in uh, certain terminology or jargon for your event. Uh, one example may be a, a product launch where you want the Lexi engine to recognize the name of your product. For example, you know, it's maybe uh, the name of a, a model of car or a new software program. You can program that, that term in so um, it's captioned accurately when spoken. Um, Lexi Vision is, is another feature um, whereby Lexi automatically can detect on screen uh, graphics and supers and erase or lower the captions as needed so it doesn't actually cover any of that on screen text that's already there. And um, accompanying Lexi's uh, scheduling functionality so you can um, simply schedule it in advance to turn on and off when your event's going to start and end. And also has a feature whereby um, you could tell it to keep going until it hears no more audio, uh, in which case you don't need to worry about it, uh, you know, turning off uh, mid-sentence if an event is running over, for instance. Um, and also as well, it comes with a profanity filter built in. Uh, so this is an optional functionality where um, uh, Lexi will censor uh, any any swear words or profanity that's spoken through an event uh, and make sure they, they don't appear in the captions. Um, if we just switch over to the next slide, uh, I'll take you through the sort of uh, the other main service we offer uh, for uh, caption productions, which is our premium captions. Um, and if you forgive the term, it's uh, human delivered. Um, so we use um, voice captioners and stenographers. Um, so voice captioners re-speak uh, the spoken content into uh, bespoke voice recognition software um, and stenographers use um, machine shorthand uh, to write captions up to around 240 words per minute. So, so their premium service is used uh, to a very large degree in the broadcast sector um, as well as high profile events where accuracy and quality are the, the key considerations. Um, and as you can see on the slide, the, the premium captions offer the greatest accuracy possible uh, with scores of 99 and above compared to 95 and above for Lexi. Uh, now, accompanying our premium captioners is also large support teams. Um, and to discuss more about our teams and the managed services we provide, I'll hand back over to Josh. Thanks so much for that, Alec. Um, so up until this point, all that we've seen is um, captioning solutions and technology that are fully self-service that you can pick up and throw into your workflow um, as of today. Um, but what we also offer as an alternative um, is a managed service. Um, so if you'd like to make use of any of those solutions, but don't feel that they fit into your workflow, like given the way we've seen trends going, um, we've seen some people be able to take those on uh, to handle themselves and um, other people would rather uh, focus on what they know on their event and leave the um, captioning tech and set up to us. Um, so we offer to manage these solutions for your event and um, anything that you've chosen that you've seen today, we can uh, offer that in a managed service package. Um, so over the years, we've developed a expert services team um, that have been able to provide coordination, uh, support, and captions uh, for a huge range of technical setups, uh, as well as content. Um, and I'll shout out today what you can see if you're accessing the closed captions live on this webinar. Big thank you to our wonderful captioners, Marta and Eddie, doing an amazing job as always. Um, so this is kind of an example as well of uh, what you'd see of, of a managed service. Um, and additionally, what we also offer is a project management service. Um, so this is for your multiple day, overnight, multiple reason, multiple multiple re region, I should say, um, your simulcast or large events, um, which would see a dedicated uh, coordinator from our side oversee all the captioning requirements, all the tech requirements, um, and be your one point of contact um, from setting up uh, your event to the very end. Um, and we can kind of see an example of that of, um, I'll give an example of what we worked on with um, the World Economic Forum, where um, they we worked with them and we managed uh, five of their simultaneous streams, um, which went up to a range of 
around I think 50 different endpoints we ended up ended up going to um, and that was also uh, splitting that stream up into eight different languages um, as well um, so that's kind of like the uh, high end of the scale of what we're able to scale up to and be able to manage successfully um, and we, we've even found an even more wide range um, of uses for these managed events where it could be anything from maybe a weekly meeting with your co-workers or university classes, which would see us take the audio um, out of the meeting platform if it's done virtually and provide the participants with a link to view those captions or integrated um, if the platform supports it, as we can see on this webinar here today. Um, and that can scale up to your, your AGMs, to your large scale performances, um, uh, which would see if it's virtually online, receive us get us to receive the feed and add closed or open captions and send to multiple platforms and really scale to what would best suit your event. Um, so I've touched on, uh, JP and I've touched on um, some multiple languages that we've done. Um, so I think I'll hand over now to uh, Mr. Gordon Chua to tell us a bit more about our multilingual services. Thank you, Josh. Uh, for the details explanation how our event is professionally managed by Josh's team. So hi everyone, my name is Gordon. I'm Business Development Manager at PET. Uh, I'm based in Malaysia, mainly in charge of the sales in Asia region. So AI Media is very focused on the English live captioning uh, in the early stage of business. As we expand our business to Europe and Asia, we began to receive the demands for non-English and multilingual captioning uh, and this demand are getting stronger since the pandemic started, especially after the growth of the virtual events. We received many questions from our event partners, like how can we make this event accessible to non-native audience? What if one of our speakers speak other languages? How do we display uh, in English or maybe Chinese? So this then brings us to develop multilingual solutions to help providing language accessibility for live streaming and events. That's the good thing in AI media. As a one-stop shop, we have products including hardware, software, and service delivery that allow us to be very flexible in designing solution for our customer. So in today, we have three ways we can tackle this language uh, challenge, suitable for any kind of event size and budget. So, if you can go to the next slide, please. Thank you. The first way we can do it is via Lessi and ICAP Translate. So Lessi, as Alec mentioned just now, is uh, used to be generated the automatic capture for any language. While ICAP Translate is our machine translation tool, it can translate Lessi output into any other language you like. Added to this, ICAP Translate also allow you to upload a do not translate list, which help to remain brand names and speaker names you don't want to translate into any other language. It can keep it in the source language and provide better viewing experience. So both Lessie and ICAP Translate are subscribe, uh, subscription based and also uh, able to use with any encoders in our product suite. The second way we can do this is via the English STMT captioning. So STMT here stands for Simple Text for Machine Translation. This is a workflow that combines human-generated captions and machine translation. So after many years of uh, experience using machine translation, we found that the MT output can be optimized by adjusting how we uh, the input. For instance, we can break down long sentences into multiple short sentences, reduce the wordiness of sentence, or replace colloquialism with direct language. We trained our human captioner to be able to adjust the caption in real time, which in return, machine translation engine provide a much better and accurate output. So uh, the language listed in this slide are all supported by, let's see, ICAP Translate and STMT. So moving to the next slide, we also have our premium solutions for events that require high quality translation or non-English caption. So we see this kind of requirement a lot in the government event or a large corporate international town hall that would require very high quality translation. 
So here you may see some language we are able to support uh, premium captioning. Uh, it's done by our human captioner, which include like simplified Chinese, Japanese, Korean, and some uh, main, main European language. Another, uh, and we we are expanding the list as we grow the business. So if you have any uh, no language you are particularly interested, reach out to us and we will see if we can find the resource and do it for you. So another great showcase of our multilingual solution in the recent service we provided for Hong Kong Art Festival is this event combined the audio interpretation uh, and also human live captioning and also machine translation at the same time. So this event has to provide caption for English speaking audience, China and Hong Kong audience. We have audio interpretation to provide translation from English to the uh, Chinese as a target language. And then our live captioning uh, output into both English and simplified Chinese caption. So to serve Hong Kong audience better, we then trans uh, machine translate from simplified Chinese to traditional Chinese caption. And that's exactly how uh, the strength of AI media, since we have like a full range of products that allow us to be very flexible. And the solution can even further develop into how the caption be displayed and even combining audio interpretation, sign language overlay, and multilingual captions all together in a single live stream. So that's pretty much everything about our multilingual service. Now let me pass back to JP for the recap of this webinar. Awesome. Thank you, Gordon. Um, and so we've run through a lot of solutions relatively quickly, um, and there's a lot more detail um, around our solutions that we don't have time for in this webinar. And that's the thing about captioning. In some ways, it's pretty simple, right? And you think, okay, it's it's someone talking, and I want that text either captioned in, um, that speech captioned in text or or translated into text. And it's a simple concept, but as you can kind of see, there's there's a lot of complicated uh, aspects to it. Um, you can get into uh, how the captioning's created and the level of quality, and then and you can also get into how do you actually distribute this captioning and, and, and depending on the workflows, it can get quite complicated. Uh, I mean, uh, we've worked with um, some events that have, you know, can't have any points of failure and uh, they need multiple redundant paths. And so you need to be able to cater to this in a, in a, a scalable way without incurring, you know, increasing costs. So um, it, it's, a, it's, it's an interesting um, area. I think the one thing I want to take away, uh, everyone to take away from this webinar is that uh, we we have a solution for a huge range of circumstances. And so, uh, and, and whether it be, um, you know, as I said, an event that has multiple um, uh, uh, re redundant paths and, and it's really complex and, you know, they're streaming across, um, you know, huge distances and you need to work in video formats that are high spec, we have solutions for that. Um, you know, whether it's a, a smaller community event on a small budget, we have, um, you know, our, our Lexi service and automated solutions to keep costs down so that we can still provide accessibility. Um, whether it's an event where you want full control, um, you, you don't want to um, send off your video or your event to, to another platform that you don't have visibility over because you want to see all the points of failure. We have um, our, our hardware and Falcon, we our self-service kind of products where you have full control over the whole um, uh, with a video workflow that and a lot of events people uh, really desire that um, or if it's a service wheel you know I just want to make this event accessible I have a lot of other things to focus on um, around the event I just kind of want this to happen um, we have our managed services too um, where we can just take that on and, and make sure that your events success uh, accessible and successful um, and, you know, uh, uh, so to wrap up this webinar, uh, you know, uh, our AI media team, we have a, a, a great, a really a team that loves to work with our customers. Uh, we have a customer success team who gets really, um, who are really across lots of different platforms and love to work with customers to scope out what the solution, the best solution is for a customer's use case. Um, we have a, an amazing services team. Uh, Josh is just one of them who, um, you know, work really closely during the event um, and, and during the rehearsal rehearsal and testing uh, to ensure that it's, it goes successfully and to troubleshoot in the you know rare case that something does go wrong. And, and we have a really patch, passionate captioner base too of highly skilled captioners who really care about their craft um, and producing really uh, high quality content. So um, if I leave you with anything, it's that you can reach out to AI Media and the team here and we'd love to uh, chat to you about how we can make your event accessible. Thank you.
Okay, thanks, JP. Um, so we've actually reached the um, the Q and A portion of today's webinar, and we've had a number of questions submitted. So we'll try and get through as many as possible. And any of questions that we don't actually get to, uh, we will answer after the close of the webinar. Um, so the first question we have uh, from Catherine is: Does this allow integration with MS Teams and Azure? Uh, Josh, would you like to take that one? Thanks, Fiona. Yeah. Um, so thank you very much for that question. Um, so I think I also saw uh, another one as well with a couple of integration questions. So I'll try and cover all of those. So I think uh, for uh, MS Teams, yes, we have they have enabled third party uh, closed captioning support. So we can integrate um, with there. It's pretty much if any platform does allow that third party integration, just like Zoom and Teams do. Um, and we've seen that slowly growing as well. Um, is that that third party support is what's needed to be able to integrate fully like, like we can see on this webinar. Um, uh, so yeah, Teams we do and WebEx. WebEx is kind of uh, an interesting platform where it doesn't have the third party um, accessibly at the moment, but it does have a multimedia viewer, um, which is the typical workflow we would do where we would add uh, the URL that would display the captions um, that would be set up in the multimedia viewer. Um, so that would be like a little pop out and you can see the captions in there. That's the workflow that we're doing with WebEx. Um, but also what you can do, you can use WebEx um, and Zoom as uh, basically your software encoder. You can RTMP stream out. So you're able to use that as kind of sending that meeting um, uh, onto either something like Falcon to be able to um, get those closed captions and then uh, send that onto a, if you're going to YouTube or any other. Um, uh, video platform. So o OBS, it does uh, work very well with OBS would be streaming into to uh, Falcon um, to, to generate those closed captions. So um, yeah, and I think we can work to get a um, integrations list if we don't have one already. Um, but hopefully that's answered your question. Thanks, Josh. Uh, we've got a question from Andrew. Uh, what languages are supported for live captions? Uh, yeah, I can tag, tag that. So basically, uh, our LASI automatic captioning uh, literally can support any language in the world. So we have different ASL engineers behind and it can basically support uh, most of the language. But uh, if you are looking at the human uh, premium captioning, uh, we currently do support English and most of the European language. Uh, for Asian language, we currently support simplified Chinese, uh, Try, uh, simplify Chinese, Japanese, and Korean. So, but in terms of uh, how the caption being displayed, uh, that could be very, uh, very tricky because uh, for Latin character like English, there shouldn't be any problem. But for non-Latin language, uh, there will be uh, another protocol we need to do. So, I will let Josh uh, will be a better person to answer this. Thanks, Gordon. Yeah, I think one thing to keep in mind when you're doing uh, the multilingual captioning primarily if you're wanting to do closed caption is currently most video, uh, most common video players only support uh, the caption format, which is 608 slash 708. Um, and that only supports the um, Latin characters. So your language is such as like Japanese, Korean, that aren't those uh, Latin characters um, can't be displayed. Um, but what we do uh, to get around that is to use open captions, which burns those captions into the video and that displays them fine. So there is always a solution we, ha we have to any um, blockers that we face at the moment. Hopefully that answers your question, thanks. Thanks guys. Um, we've got a question here from John. Are AI Media and EEG separate companies? Do I have to deal with different departments or is it one person that I'm dealing with? I can um, answer that one. So, you no, know, AI Media and AEG are definitely uh, one company. Um, we merged over a year ago now, and the teams are tightly integrated. Uh, so, uh, their whilst where the product suite in the APAC region is kind of relatively new, been in, although we've been um, you know introducing it to the market over the last six months, still relatively new. But the support and and the the knowledge shared between the companies are, are tight, tightly shared. So, uh, you know, we're one we're one company. Yes. Awesome, thanks JP. Uh, Sarah would like to know, can you customize the appearance of captions? I can take that one, that's okay. Thanks Josh. Um, thanks for the question. Yes, in short, um, absolutely you can customize um, 
the appearance. Um, the only thing where I would uh, flag that you can't use closed captions. Um, currently on um, on the Falcon and Lexi side of things, it do, does gives you various customization options. Um, however, it it does it does rely on the platform that you're sending if they actually take into account those customization fe features to be shown. Um, so in short, yeah, you can change uh, normally the text color, size, font, opacity, background um, color. All of those things can be um, customized. It really just depends on. Um, really where you're sending it if it's um, friendly. So it's always good to um, test which all of these features do. Um, and also if you're sending to a platform, let me know the platform and we can tell you what it can do. Um, but yeah, hopefully that answers your question. Thanks. Thanks, Josh. Um, we've got a question here um, from one of our participants. We have a function room where we want captions in the venue and on the live stream we produce. Can we produce this through your products? I can take that one, Fiona. Uh, yeah, and I touched on this uh, a little bit with the Encode Pro uh, product. Um, so basically, uh, that's a, a product, a hardware product that sits on site where the event is taking place. And um, the easiest way to think of it is the captioning is being inserted um, kind of early on in the process before that video is then being distributed in the venue and um, to the live stream. Uh, so you, by inserting captions there rather than later on on the actual webcast and then working out how to do it again in the venue, it's happening early earlier so that yes, you can achieve both of those um, with the Encode Pro product. Awesome, thanks JP. Um, we've got a, a quite a lengthy question here from Ursula. Um, I'll read out the question, so bear with me. Um, I found this meeting to be for technicians who provide this service. So as a deaf, hearing impaired viewer student who benefits from the captioning service, it is all going over my head. However, my, I'm interested in the conversation about the technology, te technicality, sorry. Although I would have thought the techno technology would be well and truly sorted to be able to provide a good service by now. My issue as a receiver of the service is training of the people who have to use these systems. It appears to me that various organisations, including QCA, where I attend, seem to struggle with achieving a good result. Uh, who would like to comment? I'd, I'd love to take that. And, and thank you, Ursula, for the question. And, um, you know, it's delighted delighted to hear from you. I mean, um, and, and glad to hear that you uh, consume the service because ultimately it's about you. Um, and, and you touch on a great point. Um, and that's what we're looking to try to solve is that, yes, um, to your point, uh, captioning, as I, as I mentioned, is kind of easy in a sense, like we've been producing live captioning for you know years and years now, but um, the consistency of how to actually deliver it um, hasn't really been there. So even um, prior for us as AI Media, prior to 2020, um, we'd work on even events uh, for the same event organizer. Um, often the workflow would be slightly different. We might be trying to capture the audio via a telephone line, or we're trying to capture the audio uh, um, on site, or we're trying to capture the audio via a Zoom back when people weren't that familiar with the Zoom prior to COVID. Uh, and so the actual workflows were always new that were then the AV teams or the event organizers were giving them like URLs and overlays that they're having to learn and remember how to set that up well and, and test everything and and so basically the the how of actually doing it changed it wasn't consistent so what we're looking to do with with a lot of these products is is to tightly rein that in and go okay every time you do an event you, for example if it's a hardware product that's there you just run your video through this every time and you just kind of uh either if it's human captioning you just reach out to ame and go it's this time and the delivery is all already sorted and, and and we understand how it works or or if it's a falcon and or lexi it's, it can be even more um, self-service where it's literally just a click of a button on demand whenever you require it. So um, it's a great point. And that's what we're trying to do is, is just make a, the delivery mechanism consistent uh, for, for event organizers to make it easier to achieve accessibility. Great, thanks JP. Uh, we've got a question here from Brittany. Uh, if you're recording the session, can you get a captioning file to later upload to EG YouTube to replace the auto generation caption file there? I can take that question. Um, Thanks, yes, uh, the short answer is yes. Um, we can certainly provide you with a, a caption file. Um, you also have the option of uh, how your plain text uh, transcript with each session. Um, but yeah, so you have a couple of options post-event. Um, you can either have 
a caption file in a common format like SRT, say, uh, will be just a, a like for like uh, copy of the live captions um, available sort of straight after the event. Um, we also have a service um, through a recorded team. We, we can actually take that recording and um, do a whole new uh, caption file for it, which uh, uh, we may be slightly more accurate or, or timed more exactly to, to short change um, where we have the luxury of time um, to produce um, you know, maybe higher quality captions and that is possible in a live environment. Uh, but yeah, the short answer is yes, you can um, get a file after your event for uploading to YouTube. See. Thanks, Alec. Uh, we've got another question here from Robert. Um, can you offer any of the common quality measures for accuracy of the captioning and machine translation and compare Lexi plus ICAP translate to human captioning or your STMT service? Yeah, I, thank you, Fiona. I can take this. So uh, basically, uh, these questions have like multiple uh, different areas. Like one is the same language captioning and another is like a machine translation accuracy. So uh, for the quality measure, we have an NER score for the uh, same language captioning. So our human captioning NER score can go up to you know 90, 99%, and also the Lexi can go up to 98 to 98.5%. It depends on the audio quality and also the topic model you customize. Uh, in in terms of the machine translation and ICAP translate uh, during our journey to develop this product, we find that there's no really an international, uh, international standard of quality measurement of the translation because translation tend to be very objective. And some of the clients, you know, have different uh, expectation, uh, quality expectation is very different between each client, like Japanese client usually have a higher uh, quality expectation. So, uh, for machine translation, yes, I can translate. Uh, it basically was like any machine translation, but uh, the, the only difference is it was with our uh, let and encoders, as well as it can upload the do not translate list. So that makes things uh, very different as you just go to the machine translation. So uh, for STMT, it's even better because we have a human captioner to listen to the input and modify the input to achieve a better uh, accuracy output. So if you want to assess to the accuracy of uh, STMT or ICAP Translate, we really suggest, strongly suggest you reach out to us. Uh, we can schedule a demo. Uh, we usually did that with our client. We have a demo and then uh, look through if you're happy with the uh, result. So I hope I answer your questions. Thanks, Gordon. Uh, we've got a question here, um, anonymous question. So they're interested in learning ways to provide captions to Zoom and YouTube simultaneously. Can you please let us know how that can happen? I can take that one, Fiona. Thank you very Thanks, much, anonymous. Um, there are a couple of different ways that we can uh, kind of do that workflow. Um, if you're using Zoom to YouTube, uh, probably almost exactly mirror what we're doing right here in this webinar now. We would. Um, Essentially, if we want to get captions to both the people inside the uh, Zoom meeting or webinar, and then also as well to those captions that are viewing on YouTube, um, we would integrate our captions, uh, or you'd be able to on your end, um, integrate the captions into Zoom uh, using their third party system, and then be able to RTMP stream out of that Zoom um, to your YouTube, and those those captions will carry across um, to YouTube. So. Uh, pretty simple workflow in terms of being able to get those two caption tracks in two different places. Um, hopefully that answers your question. Thanks, Josh. Uh, we have a question here from Rob. Um, I work for an event management company. Do you have solutions for companies with a large number of events uh, that we can use ongoing for different clients? Uh, I can take that one, Fiona. Um, you. Good, good question. So um, yes, look, we certainly do. Um, one of the key key words you'll hear us talk about is scalable. So, um, you know, we have a very large team of captioners, um, you know, uh, human captures for the premium service. So we work on, you know, many simultaneous events throughout the day, seven days a week. Um, so 
uh, whether you're you're looking for that premium option, but also in terms of uh, empowering uh, the simultaneous events, um, whether it be through hardware. Uh, you know, we have a massive stock of all the encoder units we've talked about. So, you know, they're available for purchase or for rental to suit your needs. Um, so, you know, we can provide as many as you might need to to keep in your, you know, your AV stack. Um, and then, of course, the, the cloud options. So the Falcon uh, encoder, um, the Lexi uh, ASR engine, um, where you, you can literally spin up as many of those in the cloud as you like, you know, unlimited. Um, also, we haven't touched on it much today, but we have another uh, cloud-based encoder called Alta, which um, works in the IP space. So um, where you may be doing IP workflows like 2110 or uh, MPEG transport streams, uh, again, that's um, uh, that's scalable and uploaded in the cloud, you know, for a major broadcasters Olympics, um, for instance, we had uh, 30 altars uh, and, and 30 Lexis going at the same time for that one customer. So, so if you do a lot of events simultaneously, yeah, the, we can basically provide as much hardware, software, ca uh, captioners or automated captioning or translation as, as you need, um, you know, and uh, we do that routinely, um, both here in APAC and also in EMEA and the North America region. Apologies, thank you, Alec. Uh, we've got a question here from Phil. Um, what is your live captioning latency? I can take that one, Fiona. Thanks, thanks, Phil. Thanks, Josh. Um, the, our captioning latency, uh, if you're going through uh, an encoder or going through Falcon Software encoder, it's less than a second um, lat latency passing through there. Um, what you can expect, though, is depending on your choice of captioning, if it's Lexi or human, um, to expect um, uh, around, if it's Lexi, probably around two to, to three seconds delay um, after the audio has come through to expect the captions to appear. Um, and also uh, with humans, you probably think uh, maybe a little bit longer, about like three to maybe up to seven seconds delay, depending on the, the speaker's pace, um, probably like me speaking way too fast. Um, so you can expect some delay uh, with the actual captions, but the actual passing through of the latency through the encoders is less than a second. Um, and we've seen uh, a couple of clients really want to value that sync to get it down as low as possible. And what you can do, for example, with Falcon, uh, it has a feature called CC match, which you can delay the audio and uh, the vision of your stream uh, so that it matches um, uh, with the caption. So it, look, so it, it, it appears in sync. Um, but if you're very much valuing um, getting the audio and the vision uh, to the endpoint as quickly as possible, you can you can leave that out. Um, so normally I'll, I would, for a CC match, uh, I'll, I would uh, usually add about four seconds of delay onto the stream. Um, so uh, if you're taking into account the whole workflow, uh, for example, using Falcon as, as the example here, um, it's probably like less than a second for the latency and then about four seconds uh, adjusting the stream to the sync. So you'd probably add on five seconds if you want to do a sync experience um, to your end, end point, um, uh, but you can completely ignore that and just have the less than one se second latency um, uh, if you're valuing the audio and the vision. Um, so hopefully that answers your latency question. Thanks, Josh. Uh, we've got a question here from Stephen. How do you handle difficult content? Alec, do you want to take that one? Yes, yeah, certainly. Thank you. Um, so difficult content uh, is a fairly broad topic, but um, but thinking about it, you know, um, uh, let's just take a few examples. So um, you might have... Um, let's say something that has a lot of profanity in it. Um, again, we would work with each kind of you know client on how how they'd want to approach difficult content. So, uh, let's say you had a, something with profanity in it, but you didn't want that coming across in the captions. Uh, you know, we can instruct our captioners not to uh, caption that. Um, also, uh, Lexi, our automated offering, um, has a profanity filter built in. Um, in terms of uh, more sensitive or confidential content, um, which could be anything from, uh, you know, one-to-one -one medical appointments or uh, legal proceedings, things of that nature, 
uh, you know, all our staff, of course, are uh, bound by confidentiality agreements. Um, you know, captions are encrypted in transit. Um, and, you know, so any, any kind of sensitive information is, is uh, you know, kept only to those who, who need to access it, being uh, the viewer and, and the captioner um, who, who needs to deal with it. Um, uh, and more broadly, in a broadcast context, um, especially where we're dealing with the uh, the daily news cycle uh, for natural disasters and things of that ilk, um, you know, our captures are all very uh, highly trained and uh, highly skilled in, in dealing with this kind of content. And, and we have support mechanisms uh, in place to sort of look after, um, you know, the sort of mental health of people who, who work on, on these kind of things. Um, so, uh, look, it's a very broad topic, but um, essentially we will work with, uh, you know, each client on their unique event and their unique needs um, to, to make sure your requirements are met. I hope that answers the question, but again, I'm happy to follow up after, the, after this. Thanks, Alec. Uh, we've had a question come through from Izzy. How does the software handle bilingual content? For example, here in New Zealand, we will often have speakers swap between English and Te Rio Maori frequently, even within the same sentence. I can take that one, Fiona, and thank you, Izzy, for the question. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a really good question. So um, there's kind of two answers. If it's being captioned by one of our human captioners, um, uh, a, good, a good example is, um, so we'll assume a captioning in English. And um, if, if it's um, uh, a non-English language that pops up, um, the, the, it, it is difficult, really difficult to caption that correctly on the fly um, and, unless it's anticipated. A good example of where it is anticipated is here in Australia, we often do a welcome or acknowledgement of countries that contain a lot of uh, indigenous terminology and often we'll work with events um, uh, partners to, to get as much of that terminology up front. Our captioners can prepare that and ensure that it's all captioned um, incorrectly. Uh, so with, with advance notice, we can uh, cater for it. Ad hoc, especially if the term is um, unexpected, um, it is a challenge, um, but um, uh, it is something that uh, we work with partners to try and manage and do the best that we can um, uh, to, to, to try and accomplish. But it is undeniably a difficult one. Uh, from a, the soft, software point of view, unfortunately, it's even more difficult. Of the, a lot of the engines are, are designed to listen to a specific language. So you actually have to tell it which language it should be listening out for. So uh, if it's, again, if it's an English engine and then someone starts speaking Mandarin, um, it's going to hear that Mandarin and attempt to try and d discern, is that English? Um, and so that is one of the techno technological limitations of, of automatic captioning at the moment. Um, you can um, get... There are solutions where, um, depending on the type of event, if you are like if one person is speaking in a language consistently, another person speaking in another language consistently, there are some workflows we could set up to kind of cater for that. Um, that you know could be a little bit complicated, but yes, if it's one person switching between languages fairly often, um, from a, a automatic point of view, that that is a challenge. Sorry, JP, could I add to that as well? Um, sure. Just because it's a quite a specific example, which um, we've actually seen a use case for um, that I've worked with is um, especially for um, doing a lot of New Zealand content that we have experience with. Um, we've seen uh, a specific example of this is where we've provided um, human captions in English and uh, we've provided um, our captioners with uh, some basic Maori dictionary terms, which they train in and where it's used, they, they will be able to caption them. Um, but if not, they will then uh, in the English captions put like in brackets um, speaks, speaks um, Te Rio Maori. Um, and in addition to that, we've also run a Lexi uh, instance of Maori and provided that to the audience as well. So those people that want to view um, the Maori translation, they have that there with them. Um, so um, that's been a good example um, that I've seen of being able to reach both um, during that blocker of uh, being able to only do that one language um, in one format. Thanks, Josh. Uh, we're actually at time, um, so we're going to have to finish it up for there. There are a couple of questions that we didn't get to, so we will answer those um, and make them available to attendees. Uh, we'll also be sending a recording of the webinar to all registered attendees. Uh, I'd like to thank you all for, for attending today. We've had a great turnout for the event. 
Uh, and to John, Alec, um, Gordon and Josh, thank you for your time and the expertise that you've shared about live event captioning. And also a special thanks to the live captioning team behind the scenes that have made sure that this event is accessible. Um, if you do have any other questions about AI media or EEG products um, or anything of the topics that we've discussed today, uh, you're welcome to reach out to us. Um, one more thing before we go, AI Media will be exhibiting at the upcoming Integrate Expo um, that's happening at the ICC in Sydney from the 17th to the 19th of August. So if you can, please come down and see us at our booth. Um, the details of the event are on the upcoming events page of the AI Media website. Uh, so thank you all very much um, again, and we hope to see you again at our next webinar or at the Integrate.